This is the flower of red horse chestnut. Now, horse chestnut from the old world, conquers, crossed over with red buckeye, a member of the chestnut family from the new world. The result is this. It's got the same flower habit as the horse chestnut, but it's red. The leaves are looking like this, a little less serrated, but they are very much like the horse chestnut leaves. And the fruit is somewhat less spiky than the horse chestnut. I don't have it under the tree here. They all disappeared and rotted away, but the flowers are stunning. And here is the same red horse chestnut tree in the fall. It's a small tree. On the roof of the car here, I have a red horse chestnut fruit. It's, it parts into three and it's got barely any spikes on it. That's, that's how it grows, that's how it falls off the tree. And inside, of course, instead of three compartments, there are three compartments, but there is only a seed in one of them. And the seed looks like this, much like much like conkers on the uh, horse chestnut tree, but it's a lot smaller. And it's somewhat looking like the red buckeye, of course. The leaves on this one, in addition to the differences with the fruits, or similarities with the fruit, the bark looks like this. This color and not doesn't have any deep ridges or anything. And the leaves are, and the leaves have five leaflets. So this would be the leaf stem, and those would be the five leaflets on it. Sometimes there's only four, or maybe six, but most of them have five. And the shape of these leaflets is uh, is different from a horse chestnut. A horse chestnut is narrow at the base of the leaflet and super wide at the tip somewhere here and then tapers abruptly or sharply into a into a tip but on this one it's more uniform or more even that like evenly tapering to the widest part and and then not so abrupt uh, towards the tip so a red horse chestnut is planted for ornamental purposes for its nice looking flowers